Did you build most of your muscle with daily bodyweight workouts? I read this. I read in this Paul Wade book, Convert Conditioning, that it is better to rest between your workouts even when you only train with your own weight. What do you think is the best way? So this is a comment that I got um, about two days ago, possibly. And it's basically, you know, they just asked me, like, did I get most of my training from daily bodyweight workouts? I would say so. Um, now, before I started this whole daily calisthenics, I wasn't really training daily. I was training maybe at most six days out of the week, sometimes five days out of the week. Um, and I don't think I was doing resistance training every single day. Now, uh, and, then, and then there's the later part of the question. Um, so about a book that they read called Conflict Conditioning and that uh, it's better to take rest days between your workouts or just, you know, rest days um, even when you're training with your own body weight. Now, as a person who has done resistance training uh, every single day for 100 days, up to 100 days, now, it really just depends when it comes to the best way, quote unquote, it really just depends on what it is that you want to do and what it is that is towards your benefit. So you have to analyze what your goals are and then you have to see why you would want to do something. So why would you want to train, um, do resistance training every single day? Why would you want to, um, you know, or why would you want to have a rest days in between? So and that really just depends on how intense your workouts are. Now, n the way I train now, I have I kind of do it by like upper, lower, and then active recovery. Active recovery, I'm more focused on cardio, but I'm still doing like kind of like calisthenics movements. I'll do um, jump roping, which I believe to be calisthenics, uh, which is, I'm like horrible at, you can see. Um, and then there's also like burpees and stuff like that. Um, those uh, are also calisthenics. So... But they're not so taxing because I'm not using a lot of like complete resistance, like how you would in a push up or a squat or a pull up. So it's not exactly the same stimulus. I'm getting stimulus, I'm getting muscle growth, but I'm getting muscle growth from the most important muscle, which is the heart. So it's like, again, like, sure, I'm doing like with some form of resistance training every single day, but I'm not like doing the same type to where it's gonna have the same intensity and whatnot um and i believe this is just kind of like a smarter way to train so this way i can still train seven days out of the week um, but i have things structured in a way and split up in a way now i did do full body training like daily just to kind of see how it was now i don't know if it's because of my sleep schedule or if like um you know maybe it was just too taxing for me or maybe I wasn't training full body uh, smart enough, but it's like, it just like, dude, I was just incredibly tired. So I was like, okay, I think I just have to change the workout split. Um, and then, and then at first it was just kind of going to be like upper lower, um, just like, you know, seven days out of the week. And then I decided to have the upper lower, um, active recovery. So that way I'm not like completely exhausting my body by going to muscular failure or close to it um, every single day, which I think is, again, just a much smarter option. So I was really trying to experiment. I was really trying to push myself with those workouts before. And at first, you know, you kind of realize like, oh my gosh, it's actually crazy. Like the amount of like work I would do. Now I'll try and make myself do like every single day. It was a mental and especially a physical battle. But I think I definitely did get it, like a good amount of gains like from that. Do you think like from me overtraining, quote unquote, overtraining, that I would get um some, you know, some type of uh CNS fatigue? Oh, well, I think I did get that, but you would think like as if I would have depreciating results. But honestly, I made a good I feel like I made a good amount of gains, like a very noticeable uh by stressing those muscles constantly. So it really goes to show like, you know, what you're able to do through constantly pushing a muscle um, or muscle groups in general. Um, but it, it, it it's again, it, it did have depreciating results in the point of recovery. So my sleep, 
eating, things like that, those things could have been good or on point, but it still wouldn't help me feeling tired or fatigued throughout the day. So it was just a smarter option to kind of put in that active recovery day and to split things up to upper and lower. Now, I think um, in terms of a rest day where you don't do anything at all that day, I don't think that's something that we should, um, you know, be doing. I think we should have what you can call an active recovery day or some type of light resistance training. Um, whether that, that be through like stretching or doing like more higher like rep stuff, like maybe you're just kind of doing a couple squats throughout the day or a couple push-ups throughout the day or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, again, doing some stretches or doing some cardio, whether it be running, jump rope, boxing. Uh, because the human body is meant to move and we should be trying our best to to move every day within every opportunity of the day um, or at least as much of the day as possible um, so therefore we can actually like access all our forms and ranges of motion and we can be at much fuller greater health capacity um, since we are accessing the movement of our body a lot more often rather than it being just, you know, an hour out of the day or an hour five times out of the five times out of the week or something like that. Um, so I think that's just the more beneficial option here. And then plus, again, like I also upload like daily. So I'm obviously going to be more like, oh, uh, you know, of course, train every day. But again, it really depends on what you want to do. Do you want to train every day? Do you think it'll benefit your goals and what you have in mind to train every single day? Um, if you don't think so, then don't have like, you know, one rest day or maybe have two rest days possibly, but don't just do nothing that rest day. You know, you should be doing something else and don't think that like, oh, you know, cardio is going to kill your gains or whatever. Cardio kills your gains when you do an excessive m amount of cardio, like you're going to be doing like boxing training, like five times out of the week, four times out of the week, or you're running like every single day. That's like what's going to kill your gains because you're burning more energy than the calories that you're taking in. But it's like doing something like this twice out of the week, like what I'm doing, like I'm just putting on a boxing timer and I'm just like trying to exert myself within those three minute rounds. Then it's like, I'm not doing a lot um, to like take away from any gains. If anything, I'm doing better because I'm allowing my heart um, as a muscle to grow and that heart is gonna be able to pump more blood into the muscles which is going to increase growth hormone and growth hormone is going to allow me to grow um, a lot, you know, which is muscles in general. So yeah, definitely have active recovery days. Now I've, I've been kind of asked about like rest days and stuff like that, or, you know, don't you think you should have a rest day or whatever, but it's like, I do it again. I upload every day. Like to me, it just doesn't make sense to just be like, okay guys, no upload tomorrow. It's going to be my rest day. Um, we're skipping, we're skipping day 114. We're going to go straight to 116. We're going to go straight to 115 or whatever. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'd rather, I'd rather document every point of my training history um, and things like that. And, you know, what I believe to be like calisthenics or what I, you know, believe to be my own training philosophy um, as I develop it. Because I'm, I'm still a beginner. I'm still definitely a beginner. And I'm still figuring things out for sure. But it's just very exciting to kind of document this stuff and see that there's an audience growing that is willing to watch my documentation of my fitness journey, basically. Um, but yeah, that was that was a very, very interesting question to ask. Um, and another question I got was about um, my sets and reps. So how many sets and reps I do for each exercise. So these sets and reps um, or sets, okay, reps. Since I have a split up from upper, lower, uh, active recovery, uh, to me, it's really just about whether when it comes to reps, it's just like going to failure. Usually, I always try and do like 100 or 100, over 100 squats, 100 or over 100 squats for my lower body days. And then, you know, I'll do something for the hamstrings, something for the abs. Um, so, and then maybe some other, uh, quad work like sissy squats or pistol squats. And I'll do three sets of those. And then I'll just do like one straight set of like a hundred, 135, however many, uh, squats I'm going to do, whether it be Hindu or just regular body weight squats or, or regular squats. 
Um, and then for my upper body days, I'd usually, what I'll do, I have a vertical pushing and a vertical pulling movement. I'll do three sets of those. And then I'll do three sets of a, of a push up and a chin up. And then uh, I'll do like a row or I'll do dips. But as of recently, I've kind of, instead of doing rows and dips, I've just been using push-ups as my as a main chest builder, and I will do, um, I will do, uh, bicep curls and tricep extensions two sets, at the end, um, just to kind of like put more on my arms, uh, you know, um, oh my gosh, look at me over here dodging stuff, it's so crazy, <laughs> I'm still very new to this boxing stuff, um. But yeah, so with sets, reps, things like that, uh, sometimes I might do three sets or sometimes I just might do two. Um, sometimes I might not even follow that exact plan because of something dealing with time. My usual workouts will take me like 30, 35, maybe 45 minutes. But anything, if I have to have, if I only have 15 minutes or if I only have 10 minutes, um, I'll do like, instead of doing my full lower body work, I'll just do a hundred, uh, like 200 squats or something like that, or 150, whatever squats. Um, or like with my upper body workouts, I'll just do a circuit. So I'll just do a push up and a pull up circuit or like a pull up and a dip circuit with like push ups, And that'll, you know, just a 15 minute circuit, um, really exert myself, really push myself. And that'll do me pretty well until my next session so again like you know i i'm not staying 100 percent faithful to my exercise program because you know school stuff like this um but i'm still trying to make sure i you know i get the work in and i choose what exercises i feel are necessary to get whatever progress or work done for you know that session as long as i'm hitting all the major muscle groups right so like you know lower body upper body so you know chest Shoulders, triceps, back, biceps, forearms, um, quads, glutes, hamstrings, calves. I, I, I do jump rope, so I feel like that gets my calves. And then, like, you know, some ab work and lower back work for, like, you know, uh, RDLs or um, back extensions and stuff like that. So, at the end of the day, you really want to choose the main exercises. It could You could literally have one exercise for each, um, like, body part. And just stay consistent to those exercises, keep progressing, keep making progressions in them. And honestly, like you should be able to grow, you know, as long as you just stay truthful and faithful to it, um, you should get results, you know, either way, even if it takes a long time.